Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Sing this song loud and clear. Thank you, Father. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Is always just the same. Oh, praise his holy name. That is the reason why I love him so. Oh, oh, Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Hallelujah. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Oh, 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 he's always just the same. Oh, praise his holy name. That is the reason why I love him so. Oh, 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 Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Jesus Christ in the Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Abiadao, 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 Nilogetan, Abiadao, Chinekenta, Abiadao, Nilogetan, Abiadao, 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 Nilogetan, Abiadao, Chinekenta, Abiadao, Nilogetan, Abiadao, Chinekenta, Abiadao, Nilogetan, Abiadao, Chinekenta, I <laughs> For it, Lori, our more Okay, Oh, yes, I've been a living God. I am serving a living God. Amen. 
Oh yeah, I am serving a living God. Serving a living God, I am serving a living God. Amen. Serving a living God, I am serving a living God. Serving a living God, I am serving a living God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Can you shout this prayer loud and clear? Say, my father. Thank you for the grace to witness the last Sunday, the first month of this year. In the name of Jesus, my Father, thank you for the grace to witness the last Sunday in the first month of this year. In the name of Jesus, my Father, I thank you for the grace to see the last Sunday in the month of January 2023. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Say, O oh Lord, I return all glory unto you, for you are the keeper of my Israel, that neither slumber nor sleep. In the name of your Lord, I return all glory to you, for you are the keeper of my Israel, you neither slumber nor sleep. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I return all glory to you, for you are the keeper of my Israel, you neither slumber nor sleep. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Say any power waging war against my destiny. Ha. Lose the battle in the name of Jesus. Any power waging war against my destiny. Lose the battle in the name of Jesus. Any power waging war against my destiny. Lose the battle in the name of Jesus. Any power waging war against my destiny. Lose the battle in the name of Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. This is the last prayer point. But we are praying for three odd times. Beloved, pray that prayer with holy anger. Aha. Everybody that got breakthrough in the Bible, all those that were delivered one way or another in the Bible, all those that had a breakthrough in the Bible, all those that had testimonies in the Bible, they, they obtained one thing, one powerful thing happened in their life. What was that? There was divine intervention. The Lord intervened into their cases. I want you to count to God. It's another prayer meeting entirely. I want you to pray it loud and clear. Say, my father, concerning my case, intervene, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, my father, concerning my case, intervene, O oh Lord. Intervene, 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 in the name of Jesus. Intervene in the name of Jesus. Intervene in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus, mighty and wonderful name we pray. Amen. Say this again loud and clear. Say, oh Lord, concerning my case, intervene in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, concerning my case, intervene in the name of Jesus. Intervene, oh Lord. Intervene, oh Lord. Intervene, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. Intervene, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Beloved, Something is happening tonight. Intervene, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, we pray. Amen. For the third time, loud and clear, let's go. O Lord, concerning my situation, concerning my case, intervene in the name of intervene, O Lord. 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 Intervene, intervene, intervene in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. God bless you all for coming online to be a partaker of this evening prayer meeting. It's my prayers that the Lord God Almighty will meet you and visit you and meet you at the very point of your needs in the name of Jesus. Before we go further, I want to appreciate everyone on this platform especially those who have not abandoned us with the work. You are doing the work with us. The Lord God Almighty will reward you bountifully in the name of Jesus. You will not regret connecting to this platform in the name of Jesus. If you have shared testimony before, you will share more. 
If you are yet to share, your testimony is on the way. In the name of Jesus. I pray that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who has never failed and who will never fail, will arise and do something great and mighty in your life to the glory of the name of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Glory be to the name of the Lord. God bless you in Jesus' name. Now, listen carefully. Please, um, <clears throat> if you had uh, made some transfers to our account and you did not discuss with me, please reach out. I saw some inflows, about two or three of them. Nobody discussed with me. I just saw the money there. And I want to believe it's from some of our members. Please let me know if you are the one. Yes, it's not much, but then I have about three different ones like that that they didn't discover me. I don't want to mention their names. So please, if you have transferred money to the account and you didn't tell us what it's meant for, please let me know. And by the grace of God, all that will come to an end very soon because in the next few weeks, we should be able to open the account for the ministry. And I know the Lord God Almighty will continue to bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Tonight, I'd like you to listen carefully because of what we are going to deal with. And uh, I want you to please put, bring in your body, soul, and spirit into this evening ministration. Don't say, I think I've had it before. I've been telling us that such statements should not be coming out from our mouth. I've had it before. Yes, we've had it before. And you never can tell what this one is going to do in your life. The more reason why we should not say, mm, I've had it before. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to the name of the Lord. So this evening, by the grace of God, we are looking at what I call, or what I titled, spiritual defilement. Spiritual defilement. And that will quickly take us to the book of Mark chapter 7. And let me say this before we move further. Anybody who wants to pray and get results should take this message seriously. In fact, to be quite honest with you, we will not stop here. We are likely to see same thing next week Sunday by the grace of God. We will continue wherever we stop today because it's a lengthy discussion. And this is one of the areas where a lot of believers are having issues, having their prayers answered. A lot of prayers are stuck on the way because of the spiritual defilement, iniquity in the life of the prayer, no prayer warrior, the pastor calling prayer point is a defiant man, is a dirty man in the spirit realm. <laughs> the Lord will have mercy on us in Jesus' name. If the pastor is dirty, the members will be dirty. This is why you should be praying for your pastors. Even if he doesn't mean to, to run into trouble, the devil can push into trouble because of somebody in the platform, somebody in your church. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. For those who cared to join us for the program last night, you heard me say something about a pastor from Baba, I had the message from Baba Abiyah Lede on that mountain. Baba was talking about that pastor. He saw that girl. Said, ah, this girl, look at the kind of, I want to agree this guy is carrying. Ah, uh ah, -uh, only you, ah, <laughs> I need to tap from your glory. And the only way he could tap from that lady's glory was to sleep with her. So he would invite the girl to his office. And you know, whether he's under spell or what, I don't know. And the girl would open a lot for him. And the man would have his way right there in his office. And by the time he gets to the, into the podium or anywhere he's going to minister, he begins to <clears throat> perform miracles because of the glory he tapped from the life of that lady. I pray that your glory will not be wasted, your glory will not be will not be molested, your glory will not be ridiculed, your glory will not be will not go into spiritual suffocation in the name of Jesus. Every satanic and evil murder assigned to kill your glory, shall die in the name of Jesus. So don't forget tonight, try and join us for the program tonight. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Glory be to Master Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Now, um, as we go into this topic, please put in your best, put, bring your heart home. Listen to everything we need to say. Mark chapter 7, I'll read the first 23 verses. It's a bit lengthy, but you need it. You see, if the Bible, if those words are not important, it will not be written. I have learned by experience that the Bible is the book that does not waste words. 
Jesus Christ also, he does not waste words. He doesn't. So if that is in the Bible, it is important for you to read it. To the glory of God, I told you I started a challenge this month, at the beginning of this month, is going to end tomorrow by the grace of God. The whole of New Testament, under 29 days. So don't think that what I'm asking to do, I'm not doing it to. Uh, uh. And you see, it is, it is wickedness on the part of any pastor who is sharpening his own spiritual sword, but he's not telling you what he's doing. It's not good. Uh -huh. You may not know everything, but at least what is sufficient for you to make you powerful and be on fire for God, you should know it. Reading the Bible alone has some level of fire is going to deposit into your life. That is why I keep on wondering, how can you say you are praying and nothing is happening? How, how often do you read your Bible? How do you study the Bible? Do you meditate? Is there a verse that made meaning to you? I told us about what's the identifying emotion that comes from Monday to Friday on Facebook. I don't see comments, but I'm not bothered. I will continue doing it. If I'm not even, I don't even need comments. Just go there, listen to it, and go. If you like, share with anybody. But I can assure you that as many as we share that message, you will be rewarded. God has a way of rewarding you. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. I said the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Let's look at the book of Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. From verse 1. The Bible says, Then came together unto him the Pharisees, and certain of the scribes, which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defied, tells you that, that is to say, with unwashing hands, they found fault. So human beings detest defilement. You can see from there. Verse 3, for the Pharisees and the Jews, except they wash their hands oft, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the market, except they wash, and they, they, are, they are going to enter the bathroom and take a bath, they will not eat. And many other things there be, which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels, and of tables. Then the Pharisees and scribes ask him, why walk not the disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashing hands? He answered and said unto them, Well, at Isaiah prophesied of you, hypocrites, as it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for the doctrines, the commandments of men? Jesus was trying to tell them that you are looking at the comment of, comment of elders and you are holding it seriously. You hold on to the commandment of men seriously. You ignore the commandment of God. <laughs> Verse 8. For laying aside the commandment of God, can you see? He owed the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such things, such like things he do. And he said unto them, Fool, well ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own tradition. <laughs> For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso causeth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is command, that is to say, a gift. But whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered and many such like things do ye. Verse 14. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. That is, that the death in your hand, anything that is dead that we are going to consume, if that is not the thing that really defies you. Jesus was talking about a particular kind of defilement. I'll take 15 again. There's nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defy the man. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And when he had entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he said unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive 
that whatsoever thing from without entering entered into the man, it cannot defile him, because it entered not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the dust, purging all meat. And he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Can you see that? Adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defy the man. Verse 23, all these evil things come from within and defy the man. If you look at the book of uh, Psalm 24, Psalm 24, look at verses uh, 3 to 5. Psalm 24, verse 3 to 5, he said, Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that had clean hands, the hands must not be dirty. He that had clean hands and a pure heart, <laughs> who had not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. That verse 5 is interpreting answered prayers. So you can see that you want to be blessed. You want God to answer your prayers, keep your hands clean. Keep your heart pure. Don't lift your soul unto vanity. Don't put your heart on things, the mundanities of this world. Keep yourself pure. Keep yourself pure. Again, Psalm 15. In that book of Psalm, again, Psalm 15. In fact, I, I can completely tell you that once you can do what is in Psalm 15 from 1 to verse 5, you are okay as a Christian. That's the truth. In fact, if you see the reason to come in the modern Bible, the topic on Psalm 15 is called what God requires. What God wants from you and me is what you have in verse Psalm 15. Go, we have done it about two years ago on this platform. We had a deep study of it. Because of this study, we are going back to that study tomorrow by the grace of God. We're going to start it again. I'll try and look for in the archives and bring it out. Psalm 15. You will, it's a learning study. We need to study that again. You know why? This is the last Sunday in the month of January. This year is going again. Somebody has not changed his way of life since last year till now. You are still telling lies. You are still pretending. You are still into that immorality. It is true you made a resolution at the beginning of the year. Are you keeping it? Am I keeping it? What are the things you are doing last year that you know God detests? Are you still into them or you've stopped them? Psalm 15 verse 1. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? You say I'm slow. Yes. I want you to get it. Verse 2. He that walketh all brightly. The way you walk with your legs in the spirit and in the physical. You are all walking uprightly. You are not wobbling. Eh? You are not digressing. And walk at righteousness. What to do? And speak at the truth in his heart. What is coming out of your mouth? In your heart. From your heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person, a dirty person, is contempt, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own heart and changeth not. He that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent. He that doeth this thing shall never be moved. So if you look at it very well and take time to study Psalm 15 from beginning to the end, and you decide to and you pray to God that will help you to practice what Psalm 15 is saying. You are a genuine child of God. Simple. Everything is loaded in that in that psalm. You say, eh, these five verses. Yes. By the time you look at it properly, ah, no, 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 no. No. There are things you won't do if you follow Psalm 15. 
There are things you will never come near if you flow with what is in that sun. Now, what is when we talk about defilement, what do we mean? Talk about defilement. What do we mean? Defilement. What are we talking about? To defy. It means to damage the purity of something. Destroy the cleanness of something. Or you damage the appearance of something. Or you mar or spoil a particular thing. You spoil it. That's the family. Ma to destroy it, to, to make it bad. Impair. To defy means to impair. To defy means to debase. To defy means to degrade. You reduce the quality. To defy means to pollute. Some level of impurity has entered. To defy means to poison. Poison has been introduced into it. To defy means to corrupt. Bible talk about corruption. It's a man of reprobate minds. Corrupt in their minds. To taint. That thing was white. Now you have tainted it. Some level of brownish, pink, dirty gray, you know. Something has taint. The, the, the holiness has been, has been reduced. The purity has been reduced. To tarnish. When you say somebody has tarnished your image, it, they defy your image. To infect. The person was fine before. In the infection setting, that body had been defied. That cell had been defied. That organ, that tissue had been defied. Foul. It clean something has now been introduced some level of impurity. It turned into foul. It foul item. Maybe, maybe there are, there's a foul smell coming. So that the, pure, the, the freshness has been reduced. Dirty. To define means to make it dirty. To define means to soil it. To define means to stain it. To define means to destroy it. To define means to ruin it. To define means to desecrate, to violate, make impure, contaminate, pollute, treat sacrilegiously, profane, degrade, dishonor, vitiate. Beloved, all these are meaning of defilement. Defilement. I pray that the Lord God Almighty will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved, once the fire is setting, there will be drop in the value or usefulness of, of that item or complete outright uselessness. That thing will be highly be unusable. The fire is possible in the physical and the spiritual. There is physical defilement and there's spiritual defilement. Let me give you an illustration I heard from one of the men of God that I respect so much. He said, you brought a clean glass of water. Listen carefully. You brought a clean glass of water and kept on the table. Somebody now pick a pin. A pin. I'm sure you know office pin. Or even a needle. And you stick that needle into human feces and you bring it out. If you do that, there is no way that pin will take anything out. It will look as if it didn't bring out anything. Now, that needle, the way it is, you not introduce it to that clean glass of water. You will hardly notice anything. But the truth of the matter is that that water has been defied. It has been defied. Beloved, a lot of breakthroughs were hanging because of spiritual defilement. A lot of testimonies have been, have been eroded because of spiritual defilement. See, things we do in the physical, they have effect in the spirit realm. That is what most people don't understand. When they say, ah, don't commit fornication, don't go to sexual immorality, don't do this, don't do that. All the sisters praying for husband now, you may be in that trouble because of one careless sex you had in the past. All men that I say, ah, I'm in trouble. I know what is happening. And I pray with some, one pastor brought a man to me, I think towards the end of last year. I didn't see him, oh, the man only called me. I started praying with him. 
And as I was praying, the Lord told me that, oh God, this man is a fornicator. Ah. I said, sir, are you married? He said, yes. I said, ah, married. Are you surely, are you sure you're married? And I said, no. Uh, the lady I'm intend to marry her. And you're not yet married, and you are sleeping with her. And he did not stop at that. He has gone elsewhere to sleep with other women. Unknown to him that the lady he was dating is not an ordinary person. And I told him, Oga, tell your pastor what you have done and confess to him. After that, come back. Today, I have not seen him. I have not seen him. There is no way you will be involved in spiritual defilement and you expect God to be happy with you. No, it cannot happen. Huh? Read that question again. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? It is not an ordinary hill. It's not a dirty hill. Who will dwell there? Who? He now said, he that walketh uprightly. Something happened to me yesterday. On Thursday, when we had the program for uh, Rivers of Love uh, Parish, RCCG in London, during, with, uh, through, through our Zoom application, you know, I told us that I was, I was on queue for fair at the police station. I got there at 11.30 a.m. in the morning. I left there some few minutes to seven. My vehicle did not get close to the pump, talk less of buying. I had about 50 something vehicle between me and the, and the pump, and there was no more movement. I left the place without buying because the girl well, well, told me that I'll go, go home. I left, and I have little friend in the car. Friday, I was supposed to go to the mountain. I rushed to the train station. I waited when it was time to take my daughter to school. I left the day again without fire. The little in the car was what I was managing up and down. And you see, it's not, it's not increasing. It's the case. It's been depleted each time I drive. So I was troubled. And the other one is expensive, 350 per liter. Where did I get that? You know? So I was troubled. So I got to the mountain. When I got there, the indicator on the dashboard told me that your fuel is going because that show, it not bring out that light, danger, anytime the fuel could go off. So I was disturbed. So on my way back home, I branched at the police station. I bought 350. I couldn't buy them. I bought 10, 10 liters. So as I was coming home, I was actually, anyway, God will help me. I had an assignment to do in the bad yesterday. So I traveled on the public transport. As I was going, one brother from the mountain come and said, Daddy, ha, they are selling fuel above us. So I said, okay, okay, okay. Do you know anybody there? I said, yes. I said, but you are going to give me something. No? Ah. Which was what? I ran away from there. I didn't want to bribe anybody to do anything. I was not happy in my spirit. And I said, ah, okay, let me take it. I think God wanted to help me. And I thank God that God really helped me. That this man, you have been running away from this. Why do you want to go into it now? You know, because I didn't have it. That is why they say, when oppression and affliction is too much, a born again can go into witchcraft. Too. When your problem is too much, you can enter trouble. That is why it's important for you to pray well and get out of that trouble. Anyone on this platform, and you have been harassed by one problem or the other, the Lord God Almighty, he will deliver you in the name of Jesus. He will deliver you. He will deliver you. He will deliver you. You are delivered. You are delivered. You are delivered in the name of Jesus. I say you are delivered in the name of Jesus. Uh -huh. You are delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to the name of the Lord. So on getting back to Oyo, and I called him. I said, can we go to the place? The man said, yeah, let's go. As we were going, something was telling me that Oga, it will not work. I said, OK, let me just go now. <laughs> on getting to the police station, I saw the place dry. They free this way. Uh -huh. I said, thank God. I think that statement I uttered, thank God, was what God used to save me. And I said, okay. And I was telling the man with me, the car, say, let's check the other police station, the same bovers. As I got to that side, I saw that the truck was in the police station, meaning that they are just offloading fuel. In fact, when I got there, they said they are not afraid until tomorrow morning. Ah. So I now went in there to see the manager. I said, oh, God, you want to punish me this period that, and I'm your loyal customer. Why are you doing this to me? He said, Daddy, so you didn't get freedom from Thursday. I said, I didn't get Friday, I didn't get. Ah. He said, ah, oh God, 
I say, hey, you know, you don't like to shunt. I say, why will I shunt? Ah, the boy say, oh, this pastor thing, ah, this pastor thing, sir, ah. He was angry that I was behaving like a pastor. I said, so how do you expect me to behave? I will not go and shunt. Somebody will say, you see him, oh, now, pastor, is that what you want? Ah, the man calm down. Or not to me that he himself happens to be a drummer in one of the parishes of redeeming in your land, or your town. <laughs> and I said, eh, daddy, come. He, he started to bring me out of the office because some people were there. And I said, sir, you know what? Go and come back. Come and pack your vehicle. Eh, I will allow you to pack in the vehicle. If you don't allow you to bet, I will allow you to pack in the vehicle, in the compound. So first thing in the morning, you are the first people I'm going to attend to. I said, eh? I rushed home and came back. And then I, we, I went for early morning prayer for the workers in the church. Immediately I finished, I told the marriage general, I said, sir, let me go and carry my vehicle with fuel. I rushed down. That was I got for a full tank. Now, what am I bringing out? If you don't want to be defied, and God sees your heart that you don't want to be defied, he will surely help you. That was the case of Abimelech. Go and read the Bible very well, beloved. Many of us are so because we don't know what we should know in the Bible. Abimelech wanted to defy Sarah, but God said no, because he could see that Abimelech was a nice man, a king, truly. He was a king, but at the same time, he feared the Lord. He said, Have you not seen that this not? I didn't do this thing like that too. I acted in innocence of my hand and my heart. The Lord said, I've seen it. that is why I did not allow you to touch her. So God purposely will not allow you to go into sin if He could see your heart. They don't want to commit that sin. At the verge of committing that sin, He will spear you. That is where I'm going. Please, beloved, listen carefully. That's why I tell you that it's a long journey. If you flow with it, if you get to run from trouble, run away from sin, pray your prayer, give unto people, assist people that can assist, the Lord will surely answer you. No matter how bad the foundation is, if you are a true child of God and you pray the right prayers and you live well, you live right, beloved, there is no way you will not be blessed. That's him we sang. Take on one says, have faith in God. If you are, if you have faith in your God, he will surely do it. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, if spirit, if physical development is bad, spiritual development is worse. Is worse. I want to explain some things to us. There are about seven avenues through which a man could be defied. Before we look at that, you why you do you know why we are doing this, this topic? The environment is highly toxic now spiritually, extremely dirty, including pastors. I kept on talking about pastors because you say, ah, CB is a pastor. Pastors should you expect pastors to know better. But if pastor that knows better is in the trouble, in the trouble then you members should know they are in a bigger trouble. Except to know what you are doing. Of course, not all pastors are pastors anyway. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I'm not trying to justify myself. No. Where you are wrong, you are wrong. You can see that I didn't tell you lie. I wanted to go and buy that for in that normal, the abnormal way. But the Lord saw my heart and no. He changed it. It is, see, one of our sisters sent me a video clip. I'm going to send it to you immediately after this message from America. Talking about pastor deceiving members, still stylishly collecting their money, giving them insecticide, climbing them to go and preach, say their legs must not touch them because the holy man, all those things that God did not send them is what they were doing. God knows it. If we ask for anything here, it must be for that purpose. You know one thing that some people are missing out. Why? They don't open voice notes. Some people give out money to buy data. How many people have collected? Maybe five or six people. Because they don't open verse notes. They didn't come to VG. They didn't know that they needed the data. And the most better thing say, they're those that I need. And I, and I announced, if you need, tell me you need. But because they will, they will, know, they will ignore the verse notes, they will not hear. <laughs> the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. There was a case of one woman in South Africa recently. It, it, has, it, it has gone viral on the internet. A woman police officer in South Africa who asked her son to sleep with her. 
the boy initially was talking, her mommy was his own. They put your this inside. And the boy started sleeping with the mother. The mother did not only defile herself, she had defiled that boy too. And there is nothing that boy will do except to go for seal deliverance that will stop him from sleeping with his own daughter. Because a seed of darkness has been planted in the life of that boy by the mother. What led that one to do that thing now? Nobody can explain. That is why we need prayer. Or the father that was sleeping with the daughter and later told the daughter, this is my five friend, you also sleep with you. And the girl opened her laps and all the six men slept with her. They defy seven people together, including the girl. Anything that does not belong to you, you have taken is the defilement, including your tight. For first foot offering, you may not bother yourself about first foot offering, except you want uncommon breakthrough financially. But for your tight, ah, if you take it, you are a thief. If you don't like that kind of teaching, leave the platform. I will tell you the truth. The, our ancient daddies of old, fathers of old, this is the line they told. The Babaki that me of RCG, and the Deboye, Olukoya, Kumuyi, Baba Yedepo, Obadare, Joseph, and Baba Lola, Baba Olawere, Fonshua Kandi of Fede. These are men of God. Some are gone, some are still alive. And they told this line, and the Lord walked with them. Somebody knocked it from somewhere and tell you that that is wrong, and you believed him because you because before now you don't want to pay before. Ah, one sister surprised me. I'm waiting for them. Our first fruit is supposed to be twelve thousand. That's a salary. She said, "Sir, can I break it?" I said, "I've done that before." I asked my daddy, my father, and the pastor, "Sir, can I? I, I break it from this platform and from this place. Can I break it to two? The man said, "Yes." I split it into two. It's first fruit of him. It's not tight. Even tight, depending on where you want to put it. When I joined the, the bank, UBA, Nigeria, <laughs> my first fruit, I traveled from Oyo to Ikiri to meet a man of God. My first fruit, my first salary in, in, in UBA. One around something thousand then. I took it down to man. The man said, ah, what about your pastor? I said, sir, I have my reason for bringing it to you. The man now opened my phone. He said, what you have done? Let me tell you what I've done. He opened the Bible. When the man started the, the, the blessings, my brother and sister, I was, I was shocked. And that really helped me. Speedy movement while I was in the bank. It got to a point, my august were wanting, who is this boy? Somebody in Paracourt, the same rank with my boss. And we're not, I was not reporting to her. Okay, I, I passed just cross on assignment on, online. And uh, they got to a meeting. She started defending me one way. They were like, ah. My guy said, come, if you have you ever worked at Jai before? She said, no, not really. She said, Except when he was sending message to my unit once in a while. He said, how do you know so much about him like this? That was what the man said. The man said, I, you guys, you know, if I said, no. I said, just one or, one or twice on email. Everything started from somewhere. So, beloved, you don't steal from God. If you steal from men, it's bad. Stealing from God is worse. And you having any evil thought is defilement. Now, before we round up, I will just mention those seven things, seven avenues through which can be defied, and I will stop it there, continuing next Sunday. Number one, your, you could be defied through your heart. We're coming back there on Sunday. Through your hands, your hands, those two hands of yours, you could be defied. Number three, through your legs, you could be defied. Number four, through your mouth, what goes in there? <laughs> you will hear much about that on Sunday. Through your eyes, that one too. Through your ears, what you hear, what comes into your ear. <laughs> and number seven, through your organ, your private your sexual organ, you could be defied. 
you could be defiled. Close your eyes. If you're on this platform, you're not yet born again, please reach out to me after this service. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Glory be to Jesus. Or if I want, if you're on the platform, I want to now love to the Lord Jesus Christ. Says after me, Lord and Christ. Say, Lord Jesus, I come into your presence tonight. Come into my life. Take control of my life. As from today, I say bye bye to the devil and his works. Write my name in the book of life and don't allow anything to rub it off. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, we pray. Amen. If you have your prayer with me, after the program, reach out to me and we'll pray more and guide you further. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Beloved, just one prayer point to pray tonight. And I want to pray it well. The prayer point says, every power attacking my prayer life, I bury you now. Why are we praying that prayer? Defilement is one of the powers that can attack your prayer life. Can you shout it loud and clear? Every power attacking my prayer life. Da! In the name of Jesus, every power attacking my prayer life. Die in the name of Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name.